Hey guys, welcome to Chickenlandia and welcome to Bok Talk, your 100% friendly backyard chickens show. Oh my gosh, that was like a long hiatus I took there. <laughs> so I think I've been gone like almost, it's almost been two months that I have done this show. I am calling this the second season. This is the first episode of season two of Bok Talk. So I'm really excited to be here. And I'm so excited to see people that are here live with me today in the chat. And I want to say hello to those that are listening on the podcast. So today we're going to talk about a question that I get so much, especially right now because we are about to go into baby chick season um some people have already started with their baby chick season <laughs> um and so we're going to answer the question how many chickens should you get um so anyway i just want to say hello to a few people that are here i see kelsey at lavender lane farm is here now, if you guys don't know, she's actually on the Chickenlandia team. She is Kelsey. What's your title? We ca we came up with a new title for her, and now I can't remember what it is. I think it's like a uh, consultant to the president or something. <laughs> Kelsey, put your title in the in the chat for me, please. Uh, Jenissa is here. Aren't chickens so cute? Yes, they are. Christina's corner is here. Let's see. Meg Dowd is here. Brilliant Creatures is here. 13 Moons Homestead is here. Yay! She is one of my amazing moderators. So if you get a chance to say hello, say hello to her. Kitty Poppins, thank you for being here. Diane, thank you for being here. You are right on time, Diane. Deborah Bjornson is here. Real Rose Studios is here. Thank you guys so much. For being here. Oh, and Chelsea is here too. She says, all the chickens. <laughs> yes, all the chickens. Chickens are life. So yeah, so our topic today, how many chickens should you get? And I remember how fun it was when I was researching how many chickens I should get, you know, right before I got my first flock. This was before the birth of the Chickenlandia nation. <laughs> um, and I was just doing all this research, trying to figure out how many chickens I should get. And I also remember feeling pretty confused during that time, because if you are new and you are just researching about chickens and trying to figure out like, you know, how to take care of them and what to do and all that, it can be pretty confusing because there is a lot of information out there. And a lot of that information is conflicting information and it's a little bit overwhelming. So I want to tell you guys about something very exciting and you may already know what I'm about to tell you, but there is an online course coming out very soon it is Chickenlandia's Backyard Chickens 101, an online course for everyone. And I'm so excited to be offering that. We have been working very hard, me and the rest of the Chickenlandia team, working very hard to put this together. And it's been really exciting. We finally shot the main portion of the course. Um, but it's going to be a really dynamic course. There's like, see, I think there's, Eight, nine chapters in it and there's like quizzes and there's resources and there's videos and it's gonna be fun because you know if it's coming from chickenlandia we're gonna make it fun for you guys so um that's coming out very soon i do not have a launch date yet because a lot of it depends on just how we go forward putting it together but it will be coming out early baby chick season so keep an eye out for it and if you haven't you should go to my website, welcome to chickenlandia.com and sign up for my mailing list. And if you do that, there's a free little PDF that you can get. And it's going to give you a little bit of a taste of the course because there's lots of PDFs to print out with the course too. So, and the PDF is three things you must do before you get chickens. 
And if you already have chickens, you can see like what you should have done, <laughs> which is, which is exactly where I'm coming from. When I teach about chickens, it's like, Hey, this is all the stuff I should have done. <laughs> all right. So yeah, I'm just, I'm really trying to just teach a way of keeping chickens that is easy, sustainable, and above all, stress-free, because I know that there's a lot of information out there. But I've been teaching about chickens. Uh, it's almost 10 years I've been a backyard chicken educator. So, um, yeah, you know, you can just go. It's your one-stop shop. <laughs> all right. So without further ado, I want to talk about how many chickens you should get. And for those of you that are new, I'm going to explain something to you. There's going to be many people here that know exactly what I'm talking about. It's something called chicken math. Okay. <laughs> you can, you can type in the search bar, you know, in the Google search bar, hashtag chicken math. Many things will come up because uh, a lot of people know what I'm talking about. It is the tendency to just keep wanting to get more chickens. And sometimes the chicken math can take over even before you have even got your first chicken. And that's what happened to me. I went to the farm store to get, I think I was supposed to get like four chickens and I, I came home with 10, <laughs> but they're so little and they're so cute, but you know what? They grow up and they're, and they're big and we got to make sure that we have enough room and as much as I like to joke around about chicken math and it's fun to talk about it, and of course it's fun getting more chickens, um, it's actually really important to know what your limits are, to make sure that you're staying within, you know, a reasonable amount of chickens for the amount of space that you have. Because another thing I do, guys, is um, I volunteer for the Humane Society. So I see chickens that get abandoned. And I also have done some work with rescues and I know that there are hoarding situations and it can get really out of control. So, you know, what I try to do is just educate as much as I can. And, uh, you know, the main thing I just tell people is that you need to make sure you have enough room. So my, my general recommendation is two to four square feet of space per standard size chicken inside your coop. Now, if you only have two square feet of space for your chickens inside the coop, then there needs to be other places in their chicken yard where they can be out of the elements and they can hang out and they don't have to worry about getting rained on or snowed on or any of that. So like a covered run or lots of bushes or areas where they can go to be out of the elements and away from drafts. Um, and if you don't have that, then you really need to be on the four square feet per chicken side of that. Um, because there, there will be times, you know, even where I live, I'm, I'm in a very mild climate, but there's a few weeks out of the year where it's really cold and maybe it's snowing and my chickens do not like to go out into the snow. And so they're pretty much, in their coop or there's another area where they can go. It's like a little run within my run that is covered and they can go in there and there's like a little dust bath in there and there's nesting boxes in there. So they can go in there and hang out and it just gives them a little bit of enrichment and, and it makes, you know, it, I make sure that they're not being overcrowded. So those are the things that you need to plan for. And then in your run, you want to have at least 10 square feet of space per standard size chicken. Um, and they will have more than enough space with that. A lot of people are like, Oh, you know, I feel, I feel bad keeping them in an enclosed run. But what I try to tell people is that with enough enrichment and that amount of space, they're going to be just fine. And there will, they will actually be luckier than most chickens in the world who are living in very crowded spaces and don't even have room to spread their wings. So always, Always keep that in mind per, for your perspective. So if you guys didn't know, what I do in on this show is I answer questions that are submitted through my website. So my website is welcometochickenlandia.com. 
and you can go to the contact section and then there's a little drop down menu and it says ask a chicken question. So you can go there and submit a question to be answered on Bok Talk. Now I get a lot of questions and every week it's like more and more and more questions. And I used to go in and just really try and answer all of them. And that has been getting increasingly more difficult, and which is hard for me because I really want to answer people's questions. That's like, that's really important to me. And as an educator, that's, that's what I've always done. But as Chickenlandia grows, that starts to get, uh, you know, more difficult. So you you can submit your question and I will try to get back to you. Or I can also answer your question on Bok Talk. And that is fun. Then you'll be chicken famous. Just like Victoria, I'm going to answer her question today. But before I do that, I'm going to say hello to some people that have come in on the chat. I see Kiss My Grass Acres is here. <laughs> I just love her name. Hidden Spring Farm. Hello. Thank you for being here. Rebecca Miller is here. Eileen Gill is here. Double D Chicks and Stuff. <laughs> That's a cool name. Thank you for being here. G Lupita is here. Thank you guys so much for being here. Jim Euler. I hope I'm pronouncing your last name right. Thanks so much for being here, guys. I love having you here in the chat. So Victoria sent me a question a couple weeks ago. And she said, Hi. I am new to Backyard Chickens, and your YouTube channel has been so helpful. Well, I am. I'm so glad, Victoria. I recently got four chickens that were three weeks old. I noticed two were not as lively as the others. I did all the things I had learned from you, and I lost two in one week during the night. I'm so sorry about that, Victoria. Um, actually, you know, that is not an uncommon scenario. It does happen. Um, oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> I just got a, I just got a, uh, this, <laughs> this, happened to me last time. <laughs> this happened to me last time. Somebody gave me a super chat and I freaked out. Rhiannon, I, I hope I'm saying I'm pronouncing your name right because I just get like really flustered when people give me a super chat. So if you guys are listening on the podcast, a super chat is what what you can do on YouTube. People that are in the chat, they can actually donate money to Chickenlandia. So uh, I just got 20 bucks. <laughs> so thank you so much. That is very generous of you. <laughs> And uh, I really, really appreciate it. And th this is one of my one of my best fans here. She's very active in the chicken in Chickenlandia Nation. I think I'm going to call it that from now on. <laughs> Thank you so much. So let's get back to uh, Victoria's question. Um, but what I was saying is, is that you know, with baby chicks. Uh, a lot of times people will, will bring a batch home and then there'll be one that just is kind of looking droopy, listless, not really very active. And, you know, that can be something, it could be, it could be many things. It could be illness. It could be something called starve out or delayed starve out, which is almost kind of like a failure to thrive with chicks. But usually what happens is that they don't, get to food and water soon enough after they hatch. And so they lose some of their resilience and sometimes they can kind of lose the will to survive. And so they stop eating and drinking and it's, it's really sad. And I do have a video about it. It's called like natural care for two, two common chick issues. I think that's the name of it. And I will put that in the description and in the show notes but sometimes they can pull through and sometimes they're just not meant to stay. And, and that's really hard, especially when it's your first experience with baby chicks. It's really, really hard. So I just want to express, you know, my, my empathy for you, Victoria, that I understand that situation and I know how hard it is. So she goes on to say, the breeder I got them from is offering to, to replace the two, which brings me to this question. 
Do you think two chickens will be happy or do you advise more? I was sad to lose two and this breeder is an hour and a half away from me. So I question if the two will be happy. And I guess I question myself now too, because I'm new at this. I still believe something was wrong with uh, the two I lost before I got them. And you're probably right about that. But I wanted a happy flock. And if four chickens would be happy to get more happy together than two, I will make that drive. But I'm beginning to doubt myself like all mothers do <laughs> um, on what is the best decision. So, Victoria, I, of course, appreciate how you feel so much because I've been there. And I, I know that I had sent you, I, I replied back. And then today I went back through my questions and I, I decided to choose this one for today to answer today because it's very common. Um, a lot of times new chicken keepers or people that are about to start on their chicken keeping journey, they're like, oh, you know, I'm just going to get two chickens. And I usually will advise against that because the issue is that if you lose one, then you will have a dilemma. And if you lose one when there's a baby chick, when they're baby chicks, that one baby chick that is left on its own will be very sad and will need a lot of attention. So, and then you'll have the dilemma of trying to find a baby chick that is around the same age. Cause you don't want to put, you know, depending how many, how far apart in age they are, you don't want to have, a baby chick that's like six weeks old with a, a new, you know, a day old baby chick that would not be that, that might, you might have problems doing that. So I, for, especially for new chicken people, I don't want them to have that dilemma. Even as adult chickens, if you are to lose one, then you would need to add chickens to your flock. And that is a process and it can be a rather stressful process, especially for people that are new. I know this because I get lots of questions about this exact scenario, just integrating new chickens into an existing flock. And I do have a video about those steps. So, uh, you know, if, if you have to just have two chickens, then I don't want you to worry too much. There is a way to handle it and whatever it is, you will get through it and I will help as much as I can. Um, but the best, a better scenario would be to have at least a minimum of four. So here, here, is, here are my ba more of my basic guidelines. If you're getting chickens mainly for eggs, just for your family, what I recommend is getting one chicken per family member with a minimum of four chickens. And this is depending on what the rules are where you live, because there are some places where the rule is you can only have two chickens. And that gets on my last nerve. <laughs> I'm like, really? But anyway, <laughs> uh, you know, they tried. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is a conservative number, but most people, they will want, you know, that, that chicken math, that chicken math will creep in, especially after their first year. And they realize how delightful chickens are and they're back in baby, in baby chick season again. And they're like, Oh, I want to get more chickens. So if you start out with a more conservative number, then you can grow your flock and you will continue to get eggs without overcrowding your flock. And uh, what I don't want is for you to have, uh, you know, so many chickens and they're all the same age and they all get older at the same time. And then you have a lot of older chickens that aren't laying very well because chickens will lay less and less as the years go on. So if you stagger it out a bit, that's a little bit better. better. And I want to just give you some room to grow. Um, now, of course, if you're selling eggs or if you want to keep, you know, you want to give all your neighbors eggs, then you will adjust that number accordingly. But generally what I say is start out smaller than you think you need with a minimum of four chickens. Um, and then we talked about, you know, the issue of if you start out smaller than that, then you may have a problem if you lose one or two. So that really is my, my best answer for that. 
Um, Victoria, I hope things worked out for you. I know you sent this, this message several weeks ago, um, but I'm glad you sent it. Thank you so much for your question. And if you can update me, that would be wonderful. You can send me an update and let me know what happened. I'm going to get a drink here. It's tea. <laughs> Okay, guys, so we've reached, re let's start that again for the podcast. <laughs> All right, guys, so we have reached the portion of the podcast where I ask, I answer questions that have come in in the chat. And I know I've got some new people in the chat. Uh, we've got uh, Lori Nellison here, Colleen Rogers, Eric Johnson, a moderator is here. Thank you for being here. GB's World. Hi, love your channel. Thank you. All right, guys. So what I do want to ask is for you to please ask your questions in all caps. I need you to shout it at me. <laughs> <laughs> so that I so that I can see it with my progressive lenses. <laughs> um yeah, and so uh shoot shoot me your your questions. I'll give it a minute here. Sorry. <laughs> Kiss my grass acre says we went from four to eight to having twenty-two chickens this summer. <laughs> There goes that chicken math. Uh, Rebecca Miller asked the question, best way to introduce a rooster? So depending on the, the, depending on your existing flock and depending on the size of your rooster, sometimes you can, of course, you want to uh, quarantine your rooster for at least two weeks if you're able to do that. That's really um, just an extra bit of insurance. It's not foolproof, but an extra bit of something that you can do to hopefully not bring, not introduce new uh, disease into your flock. So after you do that, you can sometimes with a rooster, just integrate them right in because it's a rooster. And other times that doesn't work. And certainly if you have a flock of if you have a mixed flock of standard and bantams, or if you have all standard hens and a little itty bitty bantam rooster, you wouldn't want to do that. You would want to follow an integration process uh, to make sure that he integrates into the flock well without too much issue. So what I would suggest to you would be to um, put your, put your little rooster in an area where he is separate but seeing. And what I mean by that is that there is a partition. They can see through it, but they can't get to each other. So they can't fight and they can't draw blood on each other. And it gives them a chance to just kind of introduce themselves to each other and kind of work out a little bit of the pecking order. Um, and then after... A while of doing this, I usually say it, it, it really depends on the uh, on the circumstances, on what kind of chickens you're integrating together. But I would say at least a week of doing this. And then you can put them together at night. So you can put him at, on the roost at night and then make sure that you get there, get out there first thing in the morning to let them out so you can observe how they're all doing together. And if they're not hurting each other, if they're not drawing blood on each other, um, if there's not like severe bullying, then I would let them work it out. And if it's a rooster, usually it's a little bit easier than adding hens to uh, an existing flock. Um, and then I also mentioned earlier, I do have a video about integrating chickens and I will leave that in the description and in the show notes. So I hope that helps. Thirteen Moons Homestead asks, "How long does it take to regrow feathers after molting?" So it can take a month or two for them to go through that molt, and it's it's tough. It is tough. <laughs> That's a 
tough time for chickens. You know, they look pretty scraggly. I even have some that are still, you know, kind of at the tail end of their molt right now. And uh, it's, it's a tough time. So if you can give them a little bit of extra nutrition, a couple of weeks of vitamins, uh, electrolytes and probiotics in their water, not the whole time, but a couple of weeks of it, and a little bit of extra protein, not a ton. Don't go crazy with the protein because people tend to do that. Uh, but that will help them to get through it because growing uh, feathers is hard work. The Plunger Ladies asks, what should we do in the winter for our chickens at 10 degrees? So they should be fine. Um, I do invite you to watch a video that I made a couple months ago. It's called like how to keep your chickens alive in the winter or something like that. Um, and basically I talk about how, you know, chickens are very well adapted depending on the breed to colder climates, usually to colder weather. It's not actually the temperature that is the issue, but it is the level of moisture in your coop that you have to watch out for. So if there's a lot of condensation in your coop, that's what you don't want. That's when you can get problems like uh, respiratory illness and frostbite. Um, but if your coop is nice and dry, they should be okay, depending on how old they are um, and their breed in, in temperatures that low. That really is not too bad for a chicken. Um, but it does depend on what breed they are. Like if it's a super fancy breed from Malaysia or something like that, then they might not be as cold tolerant as say like a Bard Rock or Buff Orpington. So that, those are things that, that you need to consider. If you do decide to add supplemental heat to your coop, um, unfortunately I can't recommend heat lamps. I wish I could because they're super accessible and they're cheap and I'm all about chicken keeping being accessible to everybody, but they do pose a significant fire hazard. So I would say go with something like a cozy coop or a sweeter heater. The cozy coop is cheaper and it's, and it's pretty good. Um, and those are specially made for chicken coops and they're relatively low wattage with a, a low, chance of um fire and of, of course anytime you introduce electricity into an area there's a fire hazard there but the the level of fire hazard is way lower than a heat lamp so i hope that answered your question it's a bit of a long answer so i do recommend watching that video that i will put in the show notes and in the description <laughs> pamela benet asks, my divas haven't laid eggs for two months. Molting over now, is it normal to go that long? Uh, the answer is yes. Likely what happened is they went, they started to go through their molt. They finished their molt and now we're into a season of shorter days. And during that season, the eggs are going to be very far and few between. For example, I get like an egg a day right now. And I have 19 chickens. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it is definitely not prime egg laying season right now, but soon when the days get longer, you will be lush with eggs. So just hold out, um, and you know, hang in there, hang in there. Kiss my grass acres ass. My girls love spinach. How much is too much to give them? It's leaf spinach. You know, I I wouldn't worry too much about spinach, um, especially, you know, it's, it's good for them. Um, what I would, you know, the way that I like to think of it is I think of things more of like a, a chicken feed pyramid. Um, and I don't like to give like percentages and measurements because I really think that what that does is serve to complicate things. But if you can think about it, like we do our own nutrition where we, we kind of have an innate knowledge that we need to have a balanced nutrition. So you keep most of what they eat is their chicken feed. And then I'm a big believer in kitchen scraps. I am a big believer in it. Um, so that would be above the chicken feed and you're going to concentrate mostly on leafy greens and vegetables, um, in that, in that 
department and or like low sugar fruits, but mostly like leafy greens, kale, chard, um, and uh, bok choy, stuff like that. And spinach is good. I just wouldn't, you know, I, I think that uh, how much is too much if they are having the majority of their feed as spinach, then I don't think that would be, you know, that's not very balanced. So um, just to keep that balance there, make sure that they're getting most of their nutrition from their chicken feed. And then the, at the very top of the pyramid, sorry, my dogs are barking. I don't know if you can hear that. At the very top of the pyramid, I have healthy chicken treats and those change with the seasons, mealworms, grubs, uh, scrambled eggs, stuff like that. I hope I answered your question. It wasn't really, that wasn't really a very <laughs> good answer. I just think you need to keep it balanced, but I am not going to say that spinach is bad for them. I know some people do say that. Um, and I, I don't, I don't think that that's true. Uh, Jennifer, uh, Kirstein, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I had two chickens that were sick. I believe it was respiratory about four weeks ago. They're recovered. Wow. Good for you. But they still aren't laying. Anything I can do to help them along? <laughs> can you guys hear that? <laughs> um, I would give them some time because they have certainly been through a, a rough, a rough patch. Uh, probably since they have been sick, you are giving them a little bit of extra nutrition. They probably had some vitamins, electrolytes, probiotics, uh, maybe some scrambled egg with a little bit of minced garlic in there, um, apple cider vinegar in their water if you have that. Um, and I think it might be, you know, it could be that they were sick and that's why they're not laying or, and it could be a combination of that. And also that they have that we're just in the season that we're in. We're not in laying season right now. So it might be that when the days get longer, you're going to see more eggs, unless you're supplementing light. If you're supplementing light and not seeing a lot of eggs, then it's probably, probably because they've been sick. There is a product that I like. It is called Rescue Remedy. It is by a company called Bach Flower Remedies. And this is a homeopathic flower remedy. And it just helps them get through stressful times. Now, I can't guarantee that they're just going to start laying like crazy when you give it to them. But it certainly would be good for them to have that just kind of adjust and get back to their regular lives and... Um, just kind of get back into the swing of things. So that's probably what I would do uh, to help them to not stress out so much. Uh, Reagan F or Regan F asks, should I put a silky in my new batch of hands? <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, I like to say it's not really a flock unless you have a silky. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because I don't have a silky right now. So technically, I don't even have a flock. <laughs> um, you know, uh, what I would do is not put a single, I wouldn't integrate a single silky in with a an existing flock because I think that would be really hard on the, on the little silky. Um, if you can, I would get a couple of them and see if, if, uh, if you can integrate them together, because that would be easier for them. So I am all for silkies, but uh, I think that adding more than one would be a good idea. So Terry Ivan asks, I, hi, I have 10 chickens that started laying about a month ago, and now they are pecking at one or two of them, and then it gets worse. What do I do? Um, so I have a couple of questions about that. Number one is, are you witnessing the pecking or are you just seeing them without feathers? Because sometimes people, you know, chickens are, they have feathers missing for whatever reason. Could be rooster damage, could be molting, could be mites or lice but they assume pecking because they're seeing missing feathers. So that's my first question to you is have you witnessed it? And if you have witnessed it, is it all of the chickens pecking at these two or is it 
one or two chickens that are kind of leading the, the pack in that arena. And if that's the case, I would remove the two chickens that are the culprits or the, the one chicken that is the main culprit. And, um, you know, just remove, remove them from the flock for a week or two and then reintegrate them back in. And sometimes what that can do is it disrupts the pecking order enough to kind of bring that chicken down a notch and they stop with that unwanted behavior. Um, another thing I want you to do is I want you to make sure they're getting the right nutrition. So make sure they're getting their chicken feed, they're getting enough protein, and uh, they have enough enrichment in their space and that they have enough space. Because chickens that are bored, they can turn on each other. So that's another thing that you don't want. And then the other thing I want you to do is make sure that the chickens that are getting pecked at are not sick in some way. So you would check them for mites and lice. Um, and usually when you look like right behind their, their neck and you pull up the feathers, you can see them crawling around and look underneath the underneath the wings and around the vent. And sometimes even if you don't see the little critters, you'll see the eggs. It looks like a lot of like uh, almost like dirt kind of stuck to the feather shaft. And you'll see like clumps of that on at the base of their feathers. And that is an indication that they have um, mites. Okay. So do that first. And then if, if you're not, if that's, you know, if you've ruled everything out and you need to remove the, the bully chickens from the flock, I do have a video that is like how to reform a bully chicken. I think that's what it's called. And I'll put that in the description and, and in the show notes for you. It's frustrating. I'm so sorry that, that that's happening. Oh, you said that there's no blood being drawn and that's a good sign. That's actually a good sign. Um, and then the other thing that you want to remember is that, there is always going to be somebody at the top of the pecking order and there's always going to be somebody at the bottom. And sometimes like what we see and when we're, we're seeing it through a human lens, it's like, oh, you know, this one chicken is always by itself. Um, or this one chicken always has to eat last because they, they won't let them, they won't let it eat until they're done eating. And so that, that feels bad for us to see that, but that's also, that is chicken nature. And I guarantee you that that chicken, it wants to be with its flock. Like it would not want to be alone or separated from its flock. So just take comfort in that, that that's, that is part of the nature and try, try not to, um, you know, try to, try to look at it through a chicken's eyes. <laughs> Imagine yourself, become the chicken become the chicken. Thank you, Regan. I hope I'm saying your name right. All right. I am going to do one more question. We've got one from Real Rose Studios. I'm thinking about getting Orpingtons. Hmm. They would go in a mixed flock. Is this a good idea? I choose them for their docile nature. I think that's a great idea. Um, Orpingtons are wonderful chickens. Uh, they are, they are docile. They're relatively quiet depending on what, you know, they all have their personalities. So sometimes you might get one that likes to sing the song of its people. <laughs> um, but I think that's a great idea. I think they are a great addition to any flock. They are very cold hardy chickens and they're going to lay lots of great eggs for you. So, and, and nice big eggs. So I think, um, I am, I, my vote, my vote is yes. I, I vote a thumbs up on that choice. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, let me tell you, it is so wonderful to be back here talking to you guys. Um, don't forget to join the mailing list, download your free PDF three things you need to do before you get chickens. And it's okay if you already have them. Maybe you can go back <laughs> and, and figure out. Maybe you'll learn something. You may learn something from what you, from what you should have done. And maybe you did it. Maybe it will just be like validation. Wow, I really knew what I was doing. Um, 
But anyway, uh, go and join my my mailing list. Welcome to chickenlandia.com. And while you're there, you can submit a question to be answered on Bok Talk. I do read every single question that comes through. Even if I can't answer them all, I do read them all. And it's wonderful to hear from you guys. Okay. Thank you so much to my moderators. 13 Moons Homestead is here, was here. Eric Johnson, go check out their channels. And of course, uh, to my advisor to the president, <laughs> Kelsey Paulus from, oh my gosh, I'm blanking out, Lavender Lane Farm. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you to Talking Crows for e uh, talking to Crows for editing this episode. And if you enjoyed this podcast and you're listening, please remember to rate and review it. And the other thing I want to, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, guys. I just got a super chat from Diane. Thank you so much, Diane. She says this was super helpful and fun. And you know what? I love to hear that because that's what I want it to be. I want it to be helpful and fun. Hey, guys, if you didn't, if you didn't learn anything today but this, I will be happy. I just want you to know. You're always welcome in Chickenlandia. And thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Bye.